what professions are household names? Doctor, dentist, physical therapist, accountant, music therapist? No, probably not that last one. If I were to tell you I was a musician, you would understand what I basically do. If I were to tell you I was a therapist, you also would understand what I basically do. Why is it that when I put those two words together into one professional title, no one seems to know who I am or what my job entails? When I tell people I'm a music therapist, I'm often looked at with a blank stare or given a comment like, wow, that's so much fun. Are you a volunteer? Or my personal favorite, so what do you do exactly? When I'm given that last question, I'm caught in a challenge of whether I should answer simply or with a lot of detail. When I answer with my shortened elevator speech, which normally sounds like, I use music to help people feel better, then I don't really feel like I'm doing my profession justice. Does the other person walk away with a clear understanding of who I am and what I do? This is a problem area. There needs to be an expectation in our world of knowing and understanding what music therapy is because of its efficacy in treating people in a variety of situations. My goal in this lifetime is to create a world that not only recognizes music therapy as a profession and for its ability to help people heal, but that it becomes a household name. But how do we begin this change? Luckily, some of the fundamental aspects of healthcare are changing in ways that prime the environment to better include music therapy. There is a shift occurring away from treating the symptoms of the disease towards treating the whole self. People are starting to ask how they can use less medication, more inclusivity, and better treatments for their whole being. This might look like the use of alternative pain management, such as massage therapy or acupuncture. Or it could follow the example of Boston Medical Center's inclusion of a preventative food pantry within their hospital to better support diet and nutrition. Healthcare is moving away from treating just the symptoms towards integrative medicine. Researchers are discovering more each day how your emotions, psychological well-being, and your soul play a part on your physical health. So how does music therapy fit into this? Music is one of the longest standing self-prescribed therapies in history. Music is everywhere we go. Have you ever been to a party where there wasn't any music? Or what about when the football team scores the winning touchdown and the pep band has already packed up and left? Both situations sound fairly awkward because music is incorporated into our everyday lives. For many people, it's impossible to go without. For such a universal understanding of the passion and connection people have to music, the lack of awareness around music therapy is kind of confusing. People have used music to change or express something about themselves for years. How many times have you listened to a sad song after a breakup in order to express your emotions? Or what about using upbeat music to motivate you to run a little farther? Or how about choosing a specific song to remember and honor a loved one at their funeral? People use music to meet them where they're at. Whether that's excited or sad, worried, stressed. For the amount of people who use music as their personal coping skill, how is it that the world of healthcare does not recognize music therapy as exactly that? Music as a therapy. 
the profession of music therapy isn't new. It became a part of the working world around the time of the World Wars, when soldiers were coming back with what we now know as post-traumatic stress disorder. Musicians were hired into the hospitals to play for these soldiers. But when the doctors and nurses began to notice how music was affecting these soldiers and their PTSD, the musicians realized that they needed more training to better help these soldiers. The musicians came back equipped with knowledge of how to use music to affect change. The mus musicians began to use music to work on non-musical goals. And this remains the case today. Music therapy is the use of music or music interventions facilitated by a board certified music therapist to affect change. Music therapists can be found working within a variety of populations, but their primary goals are never musical. The goals identified in music therapy might be the same goals you're working on in another therapy. For example, a music therapist might use sung cues to increase communication with a child with autism. Or, a music therapist might use the lyrics of a song to facilitate discussion about positive coping skills with psychiatric patients. The goals are created depending on the individual and what their needs are. The goals are created with the intentions of having the patient feel better, relieve their symptoms, or help them progress. The distinction from other therapies, of course, is the music. Music is such an effective tool for therapy because it is an incredibly complex phenomenon. When you boil everything down, music is one of the only things in life that processes information on both sides of the brain at once. Consider all the elements to music for a moment. You have melody, rhythm, words, harmony, timbre, tempo, dynamics, and form. Now consider some of the deeper levels of how you experience the music. You have memory, emotions, participation type, so active or passive, and familiarity. Now try to think about all of the areas of the brain that are processing this information all at once. If it's mind-boggling, it should be. There isn't just one part of the brain called the musical lobe. Researchers who have watched the brain process music through the use of fMRI machines have seen how the brain is activated in multiple areas at one time, including the areas responsible for auditory processing, motor control, emotion, memory, and within these larger areas are even smaller areas that are more finely tuned to tell your brain how to respond. And this is important information. This tells us that music therapists can use even just one of these elements to work on a non-musical goal. Take rhythm, for example. Simply the beat pulls your brain into this idea known as entrainment, which means your brain hears the beat, processes it, and responds to it by matching. Imagine a patient who has had a stroke, and consider how their walking would be affected, so their overall stride length, their normal control, and their pace. If you give this patient a beat to follow, their brain will entrain to it in this idea known as rhythmic auditory stimulation, and their feet will follow suit. Take another element into consideration, memory. 
Music can be used to recall memory, which is especially important when memory appears to be lost. Because music uses both sides of the brain at once, when an area of the brain is damaged or decreased, like with Alzheimer's disease, another area of the brain will try to make up for that loss. So even though a patient with Alzheimer's might not be able to verbally state their needs, they might be able to sing. Finish the line of this song for me. You are my... Excellent. Through the use of music, our brains are able to access long-term memory by these different neural pathways. The more researchers learn and discover about the brain, the more music therapy is rooting itself in neuroscience. With increased ability to explain how and why music works, the more effectively we can harness music as a tool. With that being said, music therapy is already evidence-based. The decisions made by a music therapist are based in this research and in our understanding of what will be most effective or beneficial for each patient. Not only are we required to be flexible musicians, but we know how to engage and interact with patients across a multitude of diseases and disorders. Our standards of practice are just as clinical as any other therapy or healthcare profession. And this is especially so because music can be deeply vulnerable. Not all music is appropriate for every patient. In many areas of healthcare, patients can be incredibly fragile, whether emotionally, psychologically, or physically. If a basketball player were to sprain their ankle, their trainer would not say to them, go back out onto the court and keep on playing because it's fun and you love it. The trainer knows how to protect that player from any further harm. In the same way, music therapists know how to protect our patients from music that could be potentially harmful if you don't know what you're doing. Imagine the neonatal intensive care unit which houses the most fragile of humans. Music therapists trained to work in this environment know how to recognize the signs of overstimulation. Babies born before their due date are already overwhelmed by their environment, and many aspects of life could be harmful to their developing brain. The skills and tools used within music therapy in this population illustrate how music must be chosen purposefully and with understanding supported by the research. Right now is an exciting time to be a music therapist. Healthcare views music therapy as meaningful, but not necessary. Yes, music therapy is meaningful because music is meaningful. But because of music's versatility and effectiveness for patients across all healthcare settings, I would argue that music therapy is essential to our health. I am deeply passionate about music therapy education and advocacy. I believe that music is more than just mira miraculous or magical. It's a part of our human nature. Our bodies are naturally musical with our rhythmic breath, movement, and heartbeat. So when I answer that question of who I am and what I do in the simplest way, then I have a missed opportunity. There walks away another person who won't ask for the hospital's music therapist when they're with their mom who has cancer and is in a lot of pain. Or they won't recommend services to their neighbor whose child has a developmental disability. 
I want to change the world into one that's not only accepting of music therapy, but is actively seeking it. Music therapy is already changing the world, one patient and their family at a time. In reality, it won't be me who changes the world. But together, if we change the focus away from this profession that is new and exciting, towards asking how we can implement these programs everywhere there is a need. What professions are household names? Doctor, dentist, physical therapist, accountant, music therapist. Thank you.